So today I'm really excited to share with you a project using the die of the month. Now these dies are super cute. They are called spring chicken. Look how cute those are. And I, you know, I'm going to go ahead. Hi, Carrie. I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera view so that we can get started having some crafty fun. Okay. So let me show you this. These are the dies. We already kind of talked about those and we are, so we're going to use these and we're going to use fiber paper with those today. Now, if you haven't tried the fiber paper, this is such a fun product that, you know, I even sometimes forget we have it because I love our um, Perfect Blend so much and I do so much coloring that I forget about these. And these, oh my gosh, these are so much fun. They come in a package with five sheets and you can color right on these. You could use them for a background. Um, I have embossed on these and then done like a resist. But today we are going to use these with, uh, we're gonna die cut them. And I already did that for you so that we could just kind of move along. I'll move that for just one second. So you can see all of the dies, how they were laid out. Collection. What was that? All of them are in the collection. Yes, let me remind you, uh, there is a collection link up so that when you click on that collection, you can just see everything that I'm using today, okay? All right, so this is how I had them laid out. And I didn't use every die because I don't need all of them with this. And I just want to show you how easily they cut out. So you can see that they cut really easily. Even this, this was the only thing that I was a little worried about because the tail is so intricate. And I am sure it's cut, it probably needs just a little encouragement. So I am gonna go slow. And I will just use, the lines are there. I just don't wanna pull too hard because we don't want everything to lose its details. So I'm just gonna cut that a little bit. Yeah, and it may have been how I had it positioned on the plate. Sometimes the things that are in the middle of the plate because my plates are a little bit warped, that can affect it too. Okay, so now we've got all of these little intricate pieces and I can tell that it has more or less cut, but I just, see how delicate that is? We just want to make it as easy as possible. Let's cut this away from, off, we're gonna cut this away so that we're not dealing with that big chunk. That's out of our way now. Oh, there's one other little piece that comes in with this that we probably won't use with the fiber. But anyway, you can see. And then this one, if I really wanted to just pull and I wasn't trying to be really careful, I probably would be just fine. But I, um, I am going to just cut that last little bit free. And it, like I said, it was mostly already there. I just had to encourage it a little bit. Same situation with this little guy. That whole side's fine. But this is a pretty complex um, die. For the most part, I think you will be just fine. I think the, the simpler the die, the easier it is, of course. But even this is workable. It just needs a little tiny bit of help. I know, I had to see. There we go. Okay, so this guy's ready to go. Not too, not too rough there. So what we're going to do is we are going to give these guys some texture, but I'm gonna move these off for a minute and we'll do the background first, okay? So to create our background, we're gonna do something I think is kind of fun. I do wanna move this too. I don't wanna lose these dies. There's lots of little dies in this set, but they are, one of the things I love, I will point out, is see how this one is is designed? You've got all your little pieces connected with this so that you don't lose you don't lose those little guys. And I did already cut um, the backs because we're going to cut the, the back piece for this one and this one. Um, and I already did that so that we can we can do some other things. So for now, let's go on to our background. 
And I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but I've just got some perfect blend paper and I cut it down to three and three quarters by five inches. And then what I did was I took an embossing folder. Now, the one I have, I don't think you can even buy it anymore because this company is gone, but um, or got bought out or whatever. So I'll just kind of cover that up. But so I just found a wood grain embossing folder and I did provide a wood grain embossing folder link to one that we have that we're carrying at Brutus Monroe right now. And there's also one that has uh, individual slats, but um, we're gonna use just the full on embossing folder. Sorry, <laughs> trying to get those words out. And then what I did to make the look of the slats is I took, so we have this die that I think it's overlooked sometimes just because um, it, it, you, if you don't think outside of the box every now and then, sometimes you, you miss opportunities. So this is the page positioner and its original purpose is when you use this, uh, you can use it to create folios and it works as a spine to hold your, your pages in place. Um, I was just trying to think if I, I do have one right here. Gina says hi. Gina? Christina. Christina. Hi, Christina. Okay, so that die was used to create the spine of this. And you can't really see all of the little pieces because they're in between the pages. But that was the original purpose for that die. But I've used it for several other things. I've used it to make rosettes. Um, and today, I just wanted to show you because these right here are just, they emboss, they don't cut the lines in the middle. And so I used it to make the slats. And you'll be able to see it better once we add some ink to this. But, so we've got our slats and we've got our wood grain and we are ready to go. I do suggest embossing it before you put the slats in there. Okay, so we're going to take some of our, we're gonna take our blender brush and we're gonna use some Simon Hurley ink. Surprise, surprise, you know I use that quite a bit. This is called Gur, and it's one of his browns. And we are just going to kind of bring out that grain. Now, I always tend to go darker along the edges. I just like that look. Usually I'm, when I'm doing something like this, I'm trying to add some sort of distress or something. And so, you know, that's where it's gonna get distressed the most, right? But you can go as light or as dark as you like. I love that little knot in the middle. That's kind of a fun detail. So I'm gonna go a little bit more along the edges. Like I said, I like it darker on the edges. And the slats are pretty um, subtle and that's okay with me. I'm good with that. You know, it's funny because I just realized when I made this the first time, I because I, I tried out this background ahead of time already and there's a the next thing I do is going to make you wonder why I did all that at the bottom because I didn't really, I, I really didn't have to, but I still want it to be a little darker on the bottom so it's not going to hurt anything either, but it'll kind of make you laugh because that's, that's just something I would do and did. Okay, so last week I used the um, Make a Scene stencils. I used the clouds and I used the grass. So we're going to use the grass again because we can, it can pull double duty. We can use it for um, some hay. So I'm gonna go probably up to that line. I have used and abused my mat like crazy. You, if you don't have one of these, are going to really, really want one because they are amazing. Okay. So I think we decided right there. Yep, so much easier. Okay, see that? No more need for tape. So we're going to use our blender brush and our slippery one wet ink. And we're just going to mostly on this, we're gonna concentrate the ink just right at the top, right where it's 
kind of defining the, the hay. We're going to use this like three times before we're done. So it doesn't need to get inked all the way down to the bottom. Not in one go anyway. It will be inked down to the bottom, but in layers. And you'll see. Okay, so we've got our first set there. And I think we'll do another one about right here. And you can move it down. It doesn't need to be in the same spot. In fact, it's probably better if you do move it down because obviously the hay would not be all in the same pattern, right? Whoops. Don't have as much to hold on to the stencil because I moved it down. And like I said, we're mostly concentrating just right along the stencil. Not worrying too much about down here yet. Okay, so now let's add one more. I do want a little bit in there. It's not quite as dark as I thought it was, so I'm gonna just add a little bit there. I don't know if we need another one. Maybe we'll just do a little tiny bit. Maybe we'll just do just that much. Now it's okay that the ink is getting on the mat. We'll just wipe it off after. And it's okay if your mat looks like mine because it means that you're using it. And that is what it was created for. Okay, so we have got our little, our little bit of hay going on. And you can kind of ink a little bit more if you want to get a, a little darker in any areas. I think ours is sufficiently dark now. Okay, so our background is pretty well ready to go on that. Okay, so now we're going to use Chroma Mist to color our chick and chickens. I do want to do just a little bit of splatter. I am just, I'm one of those people, I like, I like that little extra touch that uh, having a little splatter gives you. So we'll do the hen first because we're going to use um, the same ink color. So we may as well just do it all at one time. So what we're going to do. Tina says hi. Hi, Tina. Thanks for joining us. So I'm using the, just the reinker now of Gur. Let's put it right in here. And I'm gonna add some water to that. Squeaky clean bottles make great Mr. Bottles when they're empty. I recycle mine a little bit. And then I'm just gonna use a paintbrush and I'm just going to kind of go along. I mostly like the edges for this. And I'm going to show you some of the things I like about this fiber paper. So the thing about fiber paper is you can keep it, you can kind of control the, the amount of product that you have on it, the um, how opaque it is. See right now, I mean, it just looks like a big line going around it. But now I can just take a paper towel and just blot it. And I can take most of that color out if I want to, which I do. I'm just mostly wanting to kind of just give the edges just a little bit of color. And now I'm gonna do the same thing, but I do want to get a little bit more color. Um, Donna, Donna says hi. Hi, Donna. Thanks for joining today. I'm going to just kind of get some color going on dirt in the body of the chicken a little bit the hen i guess you would say and again i'm just trying to add a little bit of color i don't want the edges that dark and i just don't want it to be a purely white chicken this time 
So that for me is just right. And I'm gonna, I would do the same thing on the wing. I'm not going to right now just because we have other things and because I actually have one that's dry. You can use your heat tool on it. Um, I also flecked some of the brown onto, sorry, just, if you saw all the little pieces I'm trying to keep track of. I also flicked some of it after. And then I didn't blot them because I wanted them to be more opaque, right? So did this, then I flicked it some more, and this is what I got when it all dried, okay? And we'll go back to that in just a minute. For now, I'm just going to flick our background a little bit. And I think that's plenty. Don't need a ton. And we will clean that up. Oh, actually, I also did, and I don't think we need to do it right now, but I also kind of went around the bottom uh, and the around the edges of the um, the rooster's top layer. So just keep that in mind as well. Okay, so now we can go on to the next one. Let's do, I want to show you um, how I did the chicks really quick. And these were just again using the chroma mist but it's just a little bit different we want more color on them this time that's so that's why I wanted to show you both so this one we didn't need a lot of color we just wanted to kind of define that uh, shape a little bit more these ones we want these to be colorful so I'm just gonna take this is bumblebee yellow and I'm just gonna spray it right on there Probably should back up a little bit. I'm not too worried. I can even, I can even do this a little bit. But I'm, I have more than one color I'm gonna use. So we are going to. Push it out the head. Yep. So now, if I didn't want that much color, I could always uh, blot them, right? But we do want color in these. So I'm just going to use my heat tool to kind of just dry them up a little faster. And I'm not going to dry them completely because, again, in the interest of time, I did do some of these things ahead of time so you'll be able to see them. And then I ended up using uh, yellow, orange, and also tangerine orange. I, I went along with the yellow, orange, just kind of to give another layer of color. Not all, I'm missing this spot I'm trying to get. Not all the way all over it, just kind of in areas. So this, we could dry with the um, heat tool and then I just use, um, you can either use a brush and dip it in or you can just use the actual straw thing that's at the bottom of your spray nozzle. And I just flicked a couple more. And I just kind of let the um, the color expand. If you don't like it quite so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Solid of a, of a spot. You can just add a little bit more color and let it expand. And then I used, sorry, I will have this all over me before we're done. I used the heat tool to dry that off. So I will just show you what those looked like when they're dry. So I've got these layers now that are dry. So now what I wanted to do was I, I showed you the orange piece of paper that I used, the cardstock, and I just figured if I use the orange, it takes care of the little thing on the, its head. It can even take care of the, the beak, but because I used um, as dark of yellow as I did. I didn't think it showed up real well, so I'll show you what I did instead. And then, let's see. We've got the wing, we need the body of that one. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna show you this one because I will show you what I did. So I glued it to the bottom and then, I'm just gonna move those out of the way. And then I just, I thought, okay, well, I need a little tiny beak, but I don't want to cut out 
of a, a real big sheet of paper a big die. I don't I don't need that much. So what I did was I just grabbed I have a star hole punch and I just grabbed one of those. Excuse all that ink on my fingers. And I just cut off the points on two sides. So it kind of looks a little bit like an arrowhead, right? And then I just cut it down a little bit more to create a beak. So I just had that little triangle. And that just made it easier to keep track of. So I made that one and I made this one. And I made this one. Now the eyes on these, you're probably wondering what those are. You could just slide a piece of black behind there, but unless the, the problem with the fiber is the fiber would not work for that. You would be able to see the black through that. So you would either need to use one of the dies that comes in the set to create the, the eyes for that. And there is one. There's one that's attached to the hen right there. Um, but I just thought it was easier to just use these little beads. Oh, and I like, adorable. aren't they fun? I love them too, Donna. Uh, so, but I just had a whole bunch of these little, in my stash, I just had a whole bunch of these little beads. So I just, or pearls, I guess they are. So I thought those worked really good for eyes. So that's what I'm using. So then let's Brandon do, says hi. Brandon? Yes. Hi, Brandon. So I'm gonna move these guys out of the way and we'll create that last. I wanna show you how to do the rooster really quick. So I, I already told you kinda of how to go around the edges for the top layer. And then I left this layer, which goes behind the tail, so you have that kind of two-tone, fun dimension there. Um, but for the rest of it, let's. I used, I will show you, I used uh, just the Raven ink, the re-inker, and I just put a little bit of water in it just to make it a little bit, um, a little bit more liquidy. And then I will show you what I did next. And I honestly was not too, um, not too precise. I mostly, I wanted to make sure I got this part nice uh, because I, when I originally was gonna do it, I wasn't gonna put the eyes on. So at first I, I did that really dark, but then I ended up doing the little beads so it didn't matter anyway. But if you don't want to use beads and you want to have the eyes show from behind, you would want to make that darker. Does that make sense? And I'm just brushing it on, kind of want it to look like feathers. So I'm just kind of being, just tapping it on there. And it just kind of gives it a fun texture. Doesn't look feathers. Thank you, Darren. Just fun too and easy. How easy is this? Just patting it with the brush. And if you want it to be darker, you can go another round with it. But I have one that's already dry that we're gonna use. I actually uh, went around the edges as well on this one just because I kind of like to define those edges, like I said. And so we will get out the one that I did ahead of time. So you can see how I went around those edges. So now we're ready to kind of layer up what we've got here. So I wanted, like I said, it can be a little bit sheer. So I wanted it to not be because I want to layer them in front of each other. So I'm just going, I just used, this is perfect blend paper. And I'm just going to glue our fiber to the perfect blend. And I just, do you remember in school, I remember, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one, but I just remember we'd get, we sat in tables and we'd get, glue on like a piece of paper and then we would spread it out with a piece of paper. So that was the technique I went with today. Because it is fiber, if you get a lot on there, it's going to go through and come up to the surface. So that's why I wanted to spread that out a little bit. And then... Candy says hi. Hi, Candy. How you doing? So now... 
I think I need. Gina says hi. Hi, Gina. Hey, we'll take you whenever you get here. We're always happy to see you. Okay, so we've got our wing in place. I think I just got some yellow on there from my fingers, but that's okay. All right, so we've got that much of our of our little hen done. And so now I cut out all of the little accessories, like the little combs and the... Candy oh. says just go over. She loves these chickens. Aren't they fun? I love them too, Candy. I think they're just cute and fun. Let's just glue the comb at the top of this guy, girl. This is our little mama hen. You want to push on that for just a minute and then we've we've got the eye we're going to use there's a teeny tiny little beak and a teeny tiny little what is the thing called that hangs under their beak a waddle. a waddle thank you i could not remember the name of that i'm impressed with your knowledge darren That's because you had chickens, huh? Right, Darren? I had chickens. You had chickens. So kind of push that on there. Sometimes I use the other end of my pin because it's just a nice fine tip. I also sometimes you will use my detail grabber for things like that. I am going to move that a little bit. Paul asked, why did you stop working on the rooster? Oh, we will be, we will be back to that rooster in just a second. We just went back to our little hen. Ah, okay. So I've got one of those little beads, one of those little flat back pearls for our eyeball. And I just gotta get it to stick to the, the chicken and not me. Okay, so now I'm gonna just push that down with my detail grabber. I'm going to use this end so it doesn't pull it back up, if that makes sense. Okay. And then we got to put that little waddle on. Okay, so look how cute. Super simple. Super cute. Okay, so now let's get our rooster going. So I did the same thing with this. I wanted to have, this is the, this isn't the one that I have inked. This is the one that I have inked. Okay, so this one you can barely see that it has any ink around it, but it just softened the edges just a little bit. And I did cut out a piece of white for that one as well, so that we can see that better. And we'll just do our swipe technique. And we'll add our little I think it's fun that you can use these at Halloween to be ghosts too. Anytime you can do double duty with your dyes or anything else for that matter is good with me. I didn't worry about doing a white piece for this because I still wanted it to be kind of light and feathery and I wasn't worried about it being as um, opaque. So I'm just gonna glue along our tail feathers. I think I'm in the camera view, yep. Forgot I had the tablet for a second. You are. Thank you. And then I don't know if that was enough glue. I hope it was, but you can kind of offset them and just create your own ending on that and then we'll add this top layer probably is better to do it onto the white piece because I didn't uh, take the eyes into consideration when I did that you can see I used a scrap for this guy <laughs>
Okay, and that one I didn't feel like I needed to smooth the glue out with. All right, we've got a good start on this rooster. And these do have little feet, but because of how I'm going to arrange ours, they're just gonna be sitting down so you wouldn't see their feet anyway. But this is what the feet look like, super cute. And then I think this is the one to the bigger chicken. She has little feet. <laughs> okay, so now let's add a beak. The rooster reminds me of a foghorn leghorn, says Donna. That's hilarious, Donna. It says she's showing her age. <laughs> I know who that is. Of course, that just shows my age too, right? Okay, so we've got the glue on those guys. Let's put some eyes on this guy. And then we'll add our little waddle and our little comb. When I do the eyes, I put a little bit more glue than I do for the paper. Just because I think it needs a little more to hold on to those. Right now I'm just setting them in place and then I'll push them in a little bit. Okay, I actually, oh. all right, so we've got those in place. This rooster is almost done. Just need his little waddle. So now we can start assembling this. So I also, I wanted a little bit more backdrop, just, I wanted to bring the family in a little closer. So I, um, I downloaded, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette or any of those cutting machines, You're off camera. I'm, I haven't got anything. Donna says how cute. Aren't those fun? Okay. So this is how this goes. It's, I think, what is this called? Do you know, Darren? Which? The heart, I think it's heart wall background, something like that. And I just cut it down a little bit. Cause like I said, I just kind of want to bring them in a little bit. It's called heart background. Oh, it's called heart background. But this is in the, the digi files, uh, digital files section on the Bruce Monroe site. Also, like I said, Darren's got the link that will take you to everything that I used. And if you're a subscriber to any of the monthly subscriptions, I believe it's free. So you could use that end, or if you wanted to arrange your chickens just right, you could even do it again using this size. So you could kind of do a two-in-one. But we're going to use this one right now. And this is one I love having the Barely Art glue that has that nice fine tip. Okay, so we're gonna add this little piece to the middle. Okay, so now we're ready to just keep putting all of our little guys on here. So we've got our rooster, who I think needs to be in the center of our card. He's kind of just structuring everything for his little family. And we've got these cute little guys have this one kind of close to his mom. And they are really fun. They're really easy and I used a uh, fiber paper. Okay, so I think we'll arrange it something like that. Let's put them. Well, let's just go ahead and put them on first. I'm just going to use some of our easy tear tape for the main for the rooster. Okay. Yeah, watch it because I was showing that you can die cut it, you can, I've embossed on it. It's really a fun, a fun product. And I haven't seen anything like it anywhere else. So, okay, so now we'll add, I think we'll use some of our foam dots for the rest of our layers because we want to add a little bit more dimension. I always pull the little dots off, or the tabs, because I just get in a hurry. 
Okay, so I think we'll put this lady right here. All right. And we'll put one of them towards the back. Maybe right there. And I still think this one just seems like they are kind of attached to their mom. I wonder. You can tell I'm bugged by that little yellow that got on there. I'm trying to decide if I want to just cover it. That might be kind of fun. Yeah, I think I'm going to. Because I know it's a smudge, even though... <laughs> You might not, it, it kind of blends in okay. I know it's a smudge and so it's bothering me. Okay, I like that. And then we'll add our foam dot to this guy. And then we'll add a sentiment. Now I have to tell you, I hope you'll forgive me, <laughs> but I used a sentiment from a set that has, I believe, retired. Somebody correct me if, if they're watching and they know for sure, but I'm pretty sure that it is retired. It's from like two years ago. It's called Farmhouse Friends. So if you've been a subscriber for a while, you probably have it in your stash, but it had a bunch of chicken sayings that I thought maybe, I'm trying to decide if we want an egg in there too. Um, they just seemed appropriate, so. Trying to see if we want to add any of these other little dies or if we want to sometimes simple is better knowing when to stop is sometimes as tricky as knowing what to do i think but i actually kind of like these what do you guys think i kind of like having the addition of the egg shells so the, the stamp set looks like this. So if you have this in your stash, you've got, uh, this says uh, Best of Cluck. There's one that says Just Chicken In and Hello Chickadee. There's also the stamp of the month that has Chick Chick Hooray, but I wanted something that was long and skinny. So I took the Best of Cluck one and I didn't really check it before I put my so ours is what a happy little chicken family. aren't they cute I just think it's such a fun set okay well we got to cut down our sentiment just a little bit because I cut it a little large we don't need it that big so I'm gonna put the sentiment on and then I'll cut that little edge off Let's get these little guys on there before I forget that they're not attached. I'll put this. Maybe like that. Okay, so now I just need to cut down that little, that little piece that's hanging over. And we need to put it on a mat, I think. So we'll just use some more. Actually, I'm just going to go for fast on this. Uh, I actually am used an embossing folder, and I also used the page positioner die to create the background. So it's a, it's a bigger grain than the wood grain paper has, but that wood grain paper is fun to work with too. You could definitely use that as well. I just wanted it to show up a little bit more for what I was doing. I wanted it to be kind of bold. Okay, so now I wanna tie a little piece of ribbon. So let's just add a little piece of ribbon to add a little bit of color to our, our panel here. Yvette said the card came together very cute. 
Thank you. Thanks, Yvette. It's such a fun set. Like I said, I mean, I have seen some amazing projects. If you have been watching and as you continue to watch this month, our uh, design team really made some cute projects with this. It's a fun, fun die set. And it's super reasonable. If you have not checked into the die, the die subscription, I think it's like $15 a month and that includes the shipping, um, at least here in the States. And there are, uh, the dies are always really nice and, and full. There's always a ton of dies and just big and fun. I love them. Okay. So let's see if we can push that up just a little bit. And if we like it. Do we like the ribbon? Let's see. I need to make my bow a little smaller. Okay, let's see. I think I'm gonna add that to our card base. And I'm using one of the pre-scored, pre-cut card bases. This makes life so easy. And then I think we'll use this paper. This paper, honestly, is from, um, it's photo play. It's from a six by six pad I got at Christmas time. You can see the other side, but I thought it would be fun to use this little kind of gingham. It's like, honestly, I cut it like just a fraction too short, but I think I'm going to use it anyway because I like, I like how it's breaking things up a little bit. And I only had one piece of this, so... Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. I think that's forgivable. Okay. And now we can just add our little panel to the top. if I can get that centered on there. One trick I will tell you if you struggle with centering is if you're looking down on your project, it's a lot easier than if you're trying to do it from like a sitting position or with it lower than you. If you can be above it when you do it, it will, it will be easier. Okay, that is our card. you guys I hope that you if you have not looked into our subscriptions Brutus Monroe has so many really fun ones and if you only have a, like a little bit to spend or if you have a, a little bit more to spend there is something for everyone there's a really a pretty good fit for everyone I think so anyway I hope that you will join me again next Wednesday I'll have a new project ready to go and I want to thank you for joining me today and the, the video will be um edit it a little bit and then we'll put it up on the Brutus Monroe channel and on the Crafty Shenanigans YouTube channels on Sunday. So thank you again and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.